Hey there YouTube, one fish, two fish ROC. Sitting here in front of what's going to be my honeycomb catfish breeding tank. I'm going to be putting this together Rachel style. I was greatly inspired by a video that Rachel had put out some time ago when she set up her 55 gallon easy honeycomb tank. So I got to thinking I could try one too. Uh, this was originally built in a 15 gallon tank. Uh, no one ever got to see it because I never posted it. Uh, that said, I'm going to go ahead and redo it in a 20 long as part of this great big overall game of tank Tetris that I'm playing here in my little apartment. I want to say thank you to Rachel for the inspiration and the help that she gave me. Uh, she's answered all of my questions, every email that I've ever sent her. Uh, very gracious with her time and very patient and full of all kinds of great information. So, Rachel, thank you very, very much. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So here we go. All right, the first thing I want to do is get some light going in here so I can see what it is I'm doing um, <clears throat> as we go forward with getting this setup done here. So all I'm doing is adding a couple of Velcro straps. Just make a loop of them. And then I just um, hang the light fixture from the loops and it will not uh, shift uh, the Velcro makes it nice and adjustable. The light itself is a very inexpensive nitro light. Um, honeycombs are primarily nocturnal fish. Uh, they don't really like a lot of light to begin with. And I use, uh, as you'll see soon here, I use um, low light plants, you know, Anubias and other plants that really don't need much light at all. So everybody's pretty happy. I actually run just the night light on this uh, quite a bit when I had the 15 set up just to see how things would go and honestly everything was going pretty well in there so I may continue that a bit in this application. Um, <clears throat> excuse me the shelving is just a uh, 3 foot by 18 inch muscle rack same kind that so many of us have uh, already for fish tanks and fish rooms and and the like so got that at uh, the big box store. Just gonna get this adjusted a little bit here. But this is really nice because I can adjust the height by making the loop larger. Um, you know, shift the light back and forth. Uh, utilize the uh, the grid structure up here. This is another reason why I like to buy the shelves that have the metal the metal uh, mesh underneath. And then of course I just add another uh, sheet of plywood with my beloved marine vinyl on top of it, and I paint the underside of it black. So it kind of, you know, cleans things up a bit. So here we go. We're just gonna get, go ahead, excuse me, and light this thing up so we can keep going. Got a lot to do. Boom. So there you go. We've got light. All right. Great. So on to the next part. All right, I used another little bit of Velcro just to sort of run the light cord across to the outside edge of the stand. Um, you can see the light controller on the left there, the little switch. And to the right, the green thing is one of those USB air pumps. Uh, I get mine from Aquarium Co-op. They're actually very awesome little things. They come with their own carabiner. And so I just have that hung off the uh, metal mesh up underneath as well. Uh, this tank will be receiving filtration via two methods, a sponge filter and a mechanical filter, both of which I'll show you later as we go. But I just wanted you to see we have light now and where the air in the light switches are going to be. Okay, I've gone ahead and added just a thin coat of some cycled gravel substrate I got from a tank that I took down over the weekend. Uh, in Rachel's video, I believe her tank is completely bare bottom. Uh, my 15 was, but seeing as I had some cycled gravel available, I figured I would just put a thin amount of it down on the bottom of the tank here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the uh, hardscaping and plants and things that were in the 15. <laughs>
we're back for a few. I'm going to wait for the tank to heat up a bit before we put the fish in. Uh, I've got all the aquascaping in. I have the uh, sponge filter working. I have the heater going on over here. Uh, the light's working just fine. I added some uh, new botanicals down in there. I boiled a few up for this tank. So while we wait for it to heat up and get ready for the fish, uh, we'll go ahead and install the new filter that I'm going to add to this tank. Uh, once again, I took inspiration from Rachel. Uh, recently, she received a uh, CJ Shark, which is an internal filter. I live in an apartment and all of my filters are internal. Uh, I would love to try a canister filter or a lot of hang on the backs, but I'm just too nervous to do it. Anyways, about this, I picked up the model 400 which is the smallest model. She picked up, I believe it was the 600. She's got a 55 gallon tank. This is a 20 long. So let's take a look at this pump. The mount has four suction cups. So hopefully this will stick on there really well. Here's the main pump right here. And um, this there's a piece that you can put over the nozzle so that it can be directional. The actual body rotates on the mount so that you can also add a little bit of direction as far as where you want your flow to go. And then this is the cool thing that she really liked about hers is <clears throat> the top and the bottom come apart. They're magnetized. So yeah, Rachel, you're absolutely right. This is kind of fun to do. You take it apart, you put it together, just like that. Anyways, I'm going to take the top part off, and we'll take a look down inside here. So there's top screen, and that is covering the chamber, which has two pieces of coarse sponge. Uh, I'm quite sure that you could probably customize this a bit. Uh, you could probably add a you know, something that was infused, say, with uh, charcoal or some other type of pad. Um, plenty of room down in the chamber here. Just an easy matter of pulling it off, rinsing it, and uh, putting it back together again. So again, I maybe even some bio balls down in this. I'll have to experiment with it over time. So bottom piece, you just snap the uh, grate right on top of it here get it in position, get it on there right. Still getting used to this. Get it on there. The fun part, there you go. So you have yourself a filter. And Rachel's absolutely right. Um, the reason why I got so intrigued uh, by this is she's absolutely right about these fish. They are absolutely adorable, but again, they like to cram themselves into all kinds of tight spaces. It's not always driftwood. Uh, sometimes they're in a filter intake, sometimes they're in the filter output, and other places they really shouldn't try to be. So, um, she's hoping that hers don't get into trouble using this filter. So naturally, I'm trying to follow in her footsteps with this project. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot too, and see if I get results like she gets. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and put this in, and I'm going to hook the Venturi up, and let's see how it looks in the tank. All right, I have the pump installed, and as you can see, the Venturi is on. Um, the flow right now is coming out of a large, wide, slotted opening. All right, that gives you sort of a wider distribution of flow. And as you can see, the uh, Venturi is working quite well in this setting. An awful lot of bubbles in the water. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm now going to take the hood part here, which allows you a more directed flow, concentrated. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on over top of the slotted opening to show you what happens uh, when that's on. So one moment, we'll get that on there. Okay, I have the hood on with the uh, directional flow guide on there and uh, as you can see the large stream of bubbles 
uh, seems to not happen in this case, although uh, I'm looking very closely and I can see extremely fine bubbles in the water. Um, the camera's not really going to pick that up. But what I think I like about this is this is fully adjustable, as is the body of the um, filter. So you've got control in a couple of different ways. And... Uh, I'm noticing this is blowing stuff the whole length of the tank and then it's coming around through the front and honestly I kind of like that because I find with uh, botanicals in a tank as they break down they do tend to pile up and uh, it can be hard sometimes to get all that cleaned up. I mean a certain amount of it's good but sometimes it gets a little deep down in the bottom. So it looks to me like I'm going to go with this option for a while. I'll see how the fish like it. Um, it does look to me like this is really going to do a good job of keeping flow going around the entire perimeter of the tank. So we can check up on this uh, sometime in the future and see how it's doing. All right, next step will be to add the fish. feels really good to get this one done. Uh, again, I want to thank Rachel O'Leary for answering my questions, being supportive, and uh, yeah, this tank probably wouldn't exist had it not been for your assistance and guidance and most of all your encouragement. Greatly appreciate it. And as for everybody else, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate the time you spent here and hope to see you again. So for now, it's time to say thanks and goodbye.